After cleanup, we are finally ready to do some introduction to Dutch and Burn to make you fully understand the process. I said few words before about dodging and burning. I said, what is it? However, I will be repeating myself um, because it's very important to remember some things and I cannot avoid repeating myself. And even though I think it won't be really negative, but uh, some important information going to stuck in our heads and our future work will be just amazing. I opened two images for now. Uh, the reason is because I want to work with few images to show you more examples, not just one example. Uh, so you can see different examples of Dutch and Burn, you can see few masks of Dutch and Burn, and also you can see few of different techniques of Dutch and Burning, because that's what we're going to talk about. And before start, I'm just going to start with this image, the image I was working before, and to this image I'm going to work with, and with the second image I'm going to work a later, and third image, etc. But I want to keep on on this image I already started with. And as you already maybe know, there is few different techniques of uh, dodging and burning. And as I said before, we have in Photoshop, we have tool like Dutch and Burn. And maybe you have seen a lot of tutorials on YouTube, how to do Dutch and Burn, and people show how to use these tools actually. <clears throat> so right now you can forget these tutorials because tutorials on YouTube can make you very confusing. And it doesn't mean they are right because most of the tutorials are not really right. And to do Dutch and Burn, we don't need these tools. And actually these tools are, not so good to work with dodging and burning because the idea behind the dodge and burn is only lights and the darks. So how to achieve the lights and darks, how to work with them, it's very simple. We have to just use something to brighten up the image and also the same thing to darken up the image. So that's very simple. And the easier for this would be, of course, a brush. And in this introduction, I want to talk about the first technique, which is not uh, the technique of my choice. Um, and later on, I'm going to talk about the technique of my choice. Uh, the two techniques that are the most common in Photoshop in retouching is 50% uh, gray layer or blank layer with blending mode set up for soft light. And the other technique is uh, a curve adjustment dodge and burn, which I really prefer. And in this course, I'm going to tell you about advantages of one and advantages of other one, what's the pros and cons for these ones. And I want to start with the one which comes very naturally, uh, soft light uh, layer, gray or blank layer. And for this, we're going to use just simple brush with white color and color black and some other colors to do some of the corrections because that's the natural way. White for light, for brightening the image and black color for darks, for darkening the image, for um, working with shadows. So how to prepare yourself for this technique of dodge and burn? I'm going to create new layer. Maybe these two I'm going to put to the group at first. Control Command G, and I'm going to call this cleanup. Okay. And this, let's call this gray for now. You have to know that all of the layers I'm working with, I'm going to deliver you as actions. So you're going to have a lot of actions, check and the lesson with the action, uh, and it's going to speed up your workflow a lot. You have uh, actions for gray layer, Dutch and burn, you have uh, free brushes that I made for you. You have actions for uh, curve adjustment layers, etc. So for gray, we have to fill this with color gray, edit, fill, and blending mode has a normal contents 50% gray, opacity 100%. Check this if it's correct, because sometimes you might have different values here and then it just make you confusing. So hit OK. And we have gray layer. So the thing we have to do, we have to make it invisible. To make it invisible, we have to change this to overlay or soft light. And soft light allows you to paint with whites and darks. And I'm going to show you this right now. When we brighten up the image, 
with usually it's soft flow i'm just going to keep this at five right now so with white color we brighten in the image as you can see and with color black we darken in up the image and also you can see this example so let's go back it wasn't proper work and similar example give you the blank layer blacks should be the same so normal now so change to soft light and whites like this once again and white so as you can see it's giving you exactly the same result there is uh, no difference so why we choose the gray layer or whether why some people choose blank layer and both of these has some of different advantages i'm going to start with gray, gray layer at first and let's do some basic things i'm going to lower the flow to 3% for now and do just some random stuff it, it's not the proper work it's uh, the way to show you the differences between these two very similar techniques and also with color black right now around just a little bit When we press Alt and hit the layer, and now when we change this to normal, you can see our work. It's very soft work, some of the white colors, some of the black, and actually that is very helpful to see how we work. And that's why I would recommend you to use gray layer because you can see what you're doing. And let's turn this off and do the same thing on the blank layer and of course as you can guess the visibility on the blank layer will be just maybe a little bit more difficult however it, it's all about the preferences just put this to make this visible for you And you cannot see it. To see it, you have to turn off everything and it's not so visible. So the main issue with blank layer is that you cannot see the progress of it. And that's uh, the main problem. Uh, so that's why many people choose gray layer. When you change this to the normal blending mode, you can see, you can have really clear view for your work. However, what's the issue with gray layer? When we're going to do color collect corrections, it's not really so uh, simple to fix it because we cannot do a specific selection. If we press control and hit on this, as you can see, we select all layer. We cannot select the specific things that we painted. If we want to remove something, if we want to correct the colors exactly in this area. So that, that, that's the main issue with this. And when is it about the blank layer? When you're going to do selection, you're going to select specific things, which actually going to allow you to do some of the uh, color collection. So that's um, the main difference uh, between these two. There's the same, but it's about your comfort. So between these two techniques, most of the people should work in with gray layer, it's deeper view. And um, for color corrections, there's a lot of techniques that we're going to talk about uh, to resolve this, this issue. So for now, I'm just going to create these layers once again. I'm going to create um, the gray layer. Of course, not this gray. And above this, I'm going to create one more as a blank, even though I said you can choose one, uh, we can keep two layers as a help. If we need to do some color corrections, we're going to work on the blank layer and um, the rest on the gray layer. I believe uh, such a resolve I find really comfortable 
um, even though we have maybe a bit more mess, uh, it's uh, really help uh, to your work to keep off. It doesn't take so much space, so uh, why not? So gray layer, I'm going to fill with uh, color gray. And I'm going to set up as a soft light. So for now you actually know a little bit how does it work. And in the next lesson, I'm going to uh, tell you about a few uh, help layers, uh, how you can help yourself with uh, dutching and burning. And then we're going to go into local and global dutch and burn.